Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name's Shadow Wraith, and today I'm going over my picks for the top three rarest alliances that you'll see. And obviously this is my opinion, but by rare I mean what you wouldn't expect to come across at events, or even just standard gaming. I mean, you, if you've seen these alliances please let me know, because some of them are quite strong, in my opinion, again. Okay. So, we're going to jump straight into this. My number three slot is Moria and the Dark Denizens of Mirkwood. Now, they're only yellow allies, but that doesn't matter because plus one courage to when you trap an enemy. Sure, that's nice, but I can live without it. And then the Dark Denizens of Mirkwood basically lets you take warbands without needing a hero because they only have access to one, the Spider Queen. And again, I can live without that because I've got Moria with me and I don't need all them spiders. Okay, now just to warn you, Moria does crop up on this list twice, but Moria's got the, like a ridiculous amount of allies of convenience. No green allies, but make up for it with yellow allies. So, who cares? That's awesome. Now, the reason this is such a good alliance is A, it's rare. I've never seen anyone do it, ever. And B, if you remember my previous video, where I talk about a certain little goblin. That goblin is called... And I'm going to butcher the name again. Druzag. Druzhag. The Beast Caller. And for 90 points, A, you're getting a Hero Fortitude, which isn't too bad. And being a goblin, he's not great in combat. He's only fight 3. Shoot value of 5+, plus, but who cares about that. Strength 3, defense 4, 1 attack, 2 wounds, courage 4. But he comes with 2 might, a whopping 5 will, which is not bad. And 2 fate, which is also not bad. Um, he's armoured with a dagger, a staff, normal armour, and he's got heroic channeling. Cool, no dramas there. Why are you talking about this Shadow Wraith? I'll get to that. He's got Master of the Dark Wild, so that is his special passive ability. And all it is is basically he can include wargs, fell wargs, and giant spiders and bat swarms in his warband as if they were part of the same army list. And it doesn't count as allying. Additionally, all bats, wargs, and spiders can use his courage rather than their own, okay? And he can only affect the uh, wargs, bats, and spiders with his magical powers. That's fine, because our ally is spiders, okay? And bats, actually. Now, he's got a spell called Enraged Beast, and this is pretty crazy, okay? Um, and he's also got Fury, but who cares about this? Anyway, both go off on a 3 plus Enraged Beast, got a range of 12 inches. So, what you want to do with this is, you want to ideally cast it onto the Spider Queen, if she's in combat. I mean, she's going to take a strength 10 hit, but who cares? If she's in combat with someone pretty, like, high priority that you need to kill. And I'll tell you why. This is what it does. Basically... I'll just do the quick version of it. You uh, increase the beast's fight value, attacks, strength, and courage value by two until the end of the phase. And then you take one strength hit on that creature. If you channel it, you increase it all by three instead. Okay? Now, you're going to have the Spider Queen in your list, because Spider Queen is the only hero in that list. So, it only gives you, what, 15 models to bring from the spiders, but you can bring extra spiders with these guy, uh, this guy and the other guy I'm going to mention in a sec. And um, yeah, so her stats are pretty good as they stand, but they'll jump up to something mental. Darts out with fight six, so that'd be fight eight with non-channeled, fight nine with channeled, that's nuts. Strength six, or seven, eight, or nine. Defense four, attacks two, it's pretty rubbish, until you add three to it, where it becomes five attacks. Three wounds, courage four. 3 might, 3 will, 0 fate. And on top of that, she's got Venom as a special rule. So, and Monstrous Charge. So, that's an extra attack, and you can double it if you win the fight, which you should do. You've got might, and you've got, what, 5 attacks. Yeah. So, can you see where I'm going with this? You can be Strength 9, with Monstrous Charge, and Venom, which lets you re-roll all failed wounds, with 3 points of might. It's pretty crazy. Okay? So she's only 115 points. But, yeah. You do that to her, 
and she's going to be an absolute killing machine. Sure, she takes strength 10 hit, but you never know, you might roll a 1, so there's no drama. But if she takes a win, she takes a win, she's got 2 more. If you don't want to do that, you can just cast it on a normal spider. And they get pretty crazy as well, because their fight, the uh, giant spiders, I'm going with here, because they're your better fighters, they're fight 4 standard, so they can become fight, you know, 6, or fight 7. So that's higher than most heroes, fight 7. That's pretty crazy, you know? Two attacks, going up to four attacks each. Pretty crazy. Yeah. Strength five, so going up to seven or eight. You know, that's on your normal spider. That's pretty crazy. You're probably going to kill the spider, but it's got two wounds, so you won't kill it on the first time. Yeah. You see, it's a good combo. You can bring spiders without worry, but you can just have tons of spiders with this. And then the spider queen combo on top of that. If you want to go all in, you can bring, uh, bring Ashrak. He is another goblin shaman, and he is 55 points, right? And you get basic goblin stat, so it's not even worth going over. He's like fight two, strength three, whatever. Uh, one might, four will, which is not too bad, and one fate. So a little bit weaker. Um, he's got death touch, so basically each time you wound someone on a four plus, they uh, get paralyzed, so it's all right. And he can bring spiders, giant spiders, in the same army list, and they don't count as allies. But you can also bring spiders and add two to their points, so they become 22 points each, and they gain the Venom special rule, so you can really beef them up. But I covered all this in my last video. So, moving on, you uh, he can only affect spiders with his heroic actions and his magical powers, but his magical powers are pretty good. He's got Fury as well, for spiders only, but he's also got Shroud of Shadows, 12-inch range, cast on a 4+. And that makes a target, which is a spider, has to be a spider, so it can be the queen again, if you want, or a normal spider. And it makes them invisible, so they can't be targeted by anything pretty much. People can pass through them, but they can charge them. And for every inch they're away from the target that, that is invisible, shrouded by shadows, they have to take a courage test at a minus one for each inch. So that's pretty good. You can um, kind of keep people away from you with that, but that's not what you want for this. If you channel it... If, he's, if the model's in combat with anyone, that enemy model is half their fight value for the duration of the duel. That's pretty nuts. And then you've got Bat Swarms as well, which do the same thing. You can really wombo combo people. It's just absolutely crazy. And I just want to point out, if you bring all three of these heroes, okay, because obviously you need a higher tier hero, I'm pretty sure, at the moment, it's only 260 points. So that's for the Spider Queen, Ashrak, and the other guy. You've got loads of points. You can only spend about 415 on the actual spiders from Dark Denizens of Berkwood. And then it's up to you. You can go Spider Mad. Or you can, um, you know, you've still got points to bring in the damn Balrog. And then on top of that, yeah, that's what, 610 points with the Balrog? And then just fill the rest with goblins if you're doing 1k. You can bring the drum, you can do whatever you want. It's absolutely mental. So that is my first number three slot. And that is the number three slot, okay? Ah, moving on. We've got the number two slot. And this is the dark powers of Dolgaldor and Azog's Legion. Now, this one makes more sense um, because it is quite... You know, thematic, and they're green allies, so you don't lose your army bonuses with this one. But the reason it's higher than the other one is because I've actually seen this at an event, and it did destroy the opponent I saw facing it. And the reason it destroyed them is because obviously you've got the Nazgul, okay? The Nazgul of Dolgador, and they just don't die. On a 2+, plus they come back to life each time they're slain. So minus one if you've got an elven weapon, but hey-ho, not everyone's got an elven weapon unless you're playing elves, in which case, unlucky, 3+, plus, and you can still use might to affect it, Okay? That's pretty good. And that's pretty much all you need from Dol Guldor. The Nazgul. I mean, you can bring the um, Necromancer, because he makes a 3 plus go to a 2 plus to resurrect, but he's 250 points, so it's up to you, because these guys are 75 points each. But for 75 points, you're getting a Fight 5 model, which is good, Strength 4, Defense 6, 2 attacks, 1 wound, Courage 6, 2 might, 1 wheel, 0 fate. Okay, that's not bad. That's pretty good. Um, obviously you can only have a maximum of 9 of them, so yeah. And, I mean, the ring doesn't affect them because they're uh, damn Nazgul, 
So they're hunting you. And then the servants of evil. So when choosing which Nazgul to field, pick one option from the list. And each Nazgul can only be taken once unless otherwise stated. So you've got the Witch King of Angmar, so he gets an extra might point, so he's up to three mites. You've got Kamul the Easterling, who has an extra attack instead of two. And he's got a two-handed mace. So the only t trouble with that is he's not burly. So, <laughs> it's up to you. And then you've got the uh, Dark Headsman. So basically he's got the ability Executioner. If he rolls a natural roll of a six to wound, then the strike causes not one, but D3 wounds instead. So that's okay. I mean, it's not he hasn't got a two-handed axe, so awesome. That's good for killing heroes. And then you've got the Forsaken, who's got a Trident Spear. So it counts as a spear. Additionally, the um, Forsaken must re-roll all failed rolls to wound. So he's got Venom or Bane of Kings. That's awesome. It's always good. Stroke 4, that's not bad. Then you've got the Lingering Shadow. And basically, he can just teleport after each priority roll three inches anywhere from where he originally was. That's alright. It doesn't count as moving either. And then you've got the Abyssal Knight. Uh, spiritual Displacement, and you can have two of them. And basically in the priority phase, when the priority has been rolled, the controlling player can choose to remove one of the Abyssal Knights from the board and immediately place it into base contact with the other, so long as it's also not in base contact with any enemy models, and it does not count as moving. So, awesome. That's, um, that's actually really good. And you've got Slayer of Men. Now, the Slayer of Men are absolutely disgusting. They've got two-handed mace, and basically you can have two of them, and they ha have the burly special rule. Awesome. Burly is disgusting. Anything with plus one to wound is absolutely fantastic. So you can take your pick out of any of them. They're all 75 points. Take as many as you want. On top of that, you can then, because Dolgaldor, what they struggle with is obviously troops. They don't have any. But Azog's Legion comes to the rescue there, because they've got loads. They've got loads. You can take, I mean, the Orcs of... Um, Azog's Legion, you know, they're pretty good. They're tougher orcs, basically. And Azog is an absolute beat stick. Now, I would suggest bringing Azog, because he is your hero dealer. He can absolutely decimate a hero. Because, I mean, he's quite pricey. He's 165 points, but for that, you get a fight 7 model, with strength 5, defense 5, 3 attacks, 3 wounds, and courage 5. 3 might, 3 will, 1 fate. But that changes. And then you can upgrade him to have the Signal Tower, which there is still not a model for, but you can make your own. I did, because it's quite good. It's fun for really big battles. Then, yeah, 200 points. Ugh. Then you've got the White Warg, 50 points. Take the White Warg. Without a doubt. If you don't take anything else, take the White Warg. 100%. Um, I'll move on to what he does in a second. And I'm not going to go over the Stone Flail. Basically, it's exactly the same as the Flail, but he goes down to fight 6 instead of fight 1, and it causes not 1, but D3 wounds. So it's pretty good. Pretty solid. He is burly, so y you'll be fine. And then he's got General of the North, so he's got a standfast range of 12 inches, and it can affect other Orc heroes. And, yeah, he always wounds another hero model on a 3+, plus, regardless of defence. That is disgusting. Now, the White Warg. For 50 points, you get a Fight 5 model, Strength 5, Defense 5, Defense 5 mount. That's not bad. Two attacks, two wounds, Courage 4. And it comes with three Might, which is crazy. One Will and one Fate. It's got Fell Sight, so you can charge targets you can't see. And causes Terror. So now Azor causes Terror. And has got Fell Sight. Deadly Union. You can use the Warg's Might for Azog. For anything, you can use the Warg's Will for Azog and the Warg's Fate. And you can use it for the Warg as well. It is insane. So Azog has gone up to like 6 Might, uh, 4 Will and 2 Fate. That is absolutely amazing. And then once it's separated, it automatically passes its um, Courage Test and stays in fight. And it will always pass all Courage Tests for the rest of the battle. And it also can uh, affect wargs with its heroic actions. That's it. Only wargs can benefit from it. Nice. Nice. And then, after that, like, it sounds expensive, but if you took, what, four of the Nazgul and Azog with the warg, that's 515 points. 
And then you can just chock a block the rest with an army of eight point Gundabad orcs if you want. Or goblin mercenaries, because they're cheap as chips, and they're actually pretty good because they can ambush. Yeah, so it's you can see what you can do with this. Absolutely crazy. Anyway, moving on. We'll get to the number one slot. And it is Moria. So, popping up again. And Angmar. I've never seen this done. Okay? Ever. And I'm not sure why. Because Angmar's really good and so is Moria. Um, yeah. So we'll get into what you can do with that. Now for this, you're going to want, in my opinion, the Dwimmer Lake for Angmar. The Dwimmer Lake, I love. It's absolutely amazing. Like, you can have your top pick of ring rays, but I really love this ring ray. It works so well for me. And he's 120 points. Fight 5, strength 4, defense 8, 1 attack, 1 wound, courage 6. Cool. No might, which is a downside, but that doesn't matter. That's not what you're bringing him for. 16 will, which is fantastic, and 2 fate. Okay, you can take normal wraith upgrades. I'm not going to go over that. And he's got Harbinger of Evil, and Terror, and Will of Evil. So, he doesn't want to be in combat. Because, I mean, he's okay. He can probably fight normal warriors, but, yeah, it's not a point. Don't get tar -putted. But we're going to go with his Sap Fortitude ability. So every time a hero model within 6 inches of the Dwimmer Lake spends a point of might, will, or fate, the Dwimmer Lake may elect to spend a point of will. If he does, roll a d6. On a 4, the enemy hero must spend an additional point of the same type, or the deed will be cancelled, and any might, will, or fate committed will be lost. Note that a hero model that wishes to expend multiple points of might, will, or fate may wait and see how the Dwimmer Lake's roll affects the first point, and then they can decide if they want to spend more. The Dwimmer Lake will have to spend a point of will for every point he wishes to affect, though he may wait to see how the first point of will affects his opponent before deciding to spend another will. That is absolutely bonkers. You've got 16. 16 for that. Now with him, like, he's got Drain Courage, Transfix, Compel, Black Dart, Instill Fear, and Sap Will. And they're all 12 inch range, bar Instill Fear, which is 3 inches. And then they cast on a 2+, plus, 3+, plus, 4+, plus, and then rest of 5+, plus, in the order I stated. But we're looking at Drain Courage, okay? Because this is a combo you can do, and it's quite nice. So, I would probably bring, like, you want a couple, maybe a barrel right, why not? You can paralyze people five times, technically, if you keep rolling four pluses and they don't resist it. Don't bring a shade. Don't. Okay, it won't work for this. You can if you want, but just play Angmar in that case. You want some dead marsh spectres. Now, 15 points. They're fight 2, strength 3, defense 5, 1 attack, 1 wound, courage 6. That's not what we're bringing them. They've got Blades of the Dead and Terror. And a Fell Light is in them, is their special rule. And basically, at any point during its move, a spectre can choose a, uh, a single enemy model anywhere within 12 inches of its line of sight. That model must pass a courage test, otherwise the spectre can move it completely. So yeah, you can't have it hurt itself or dismount or go prone or anything like that. But you can move it. So it's quite handy for like if someone's running off with the uh, relic they've dug up or something like that. Or if you don't want someone to trap your friends. Now, and then you've got Blazer Dead. So if you instill fear, or sorry, drain courage on a 2 plus with the Wraith, their courage reduced by 1 for the remainder of the battle. And you can do that every turn. Now, if you bombard a hero with that and get lucky and spend through its might and actually get it off, you can really make it easy for your like Barrel Whites or Dead Marsh Spectres to pick him off. Because they're usually like Courage 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, you know, you can combo it with that. Plus, additionally, you're minus 1 to their Courage because you're a Ring Wraith if you're in range, which you will be if you're casting spells at them. So, minus 1 to whatever that is. Fantastic. And then you can bring Angmar, Orcs, or whatever. But, moving on to their friends. Moria. So I probably wouldn't bother with the Orcs. Ah, before I go into Moria, you want to bring at least one Orc with a banner. Okay? Because it's going to get nuts. So, with Moria, you want to bring the Balrog. Straight up, you want the Balrog. Don't care. You, you need the Balrog for this. It's amazing. He's amazing in every single way. He's 350 points. So, 350 points. And then the Wraith is 120. So, it's only 470 points with that. Them two. Which is quite a lot. But they're a pretty good combo. Because if you keep them near the Balrog, anyone who tries to like strike against the Balrog, 
there's a threat there to stop them from doing that. Anyone who wants a heroic move and try and trap him, there's a stop there for doing it, you know? It's things like that. Absolutely perfect. Even heroic defence and stuff like that. Because that's the only way I get around battle. I'll chuck someone with heroic defence on and, yeah, have fun. It's pretty nuts. I mean, like, LSR, King LSR, do that. Three point of might, yeah, I'm going to heroic defence. Why not? <laughs> I'm not going to kill you yet. Then he's trapped and then you can strike. But the Balrog for 350 points is insane. Fight 10, strength 9, defence 9, 4 attacks, wounds 10, courage 7, no might, 10 will, no fate. He's got a fiery lash, which is a thrown weapon, which is strength 7 and 8 inches. But basically, if you, sh if you throw it and it's not on a charge, but you hit and don't kill that target, it gets pulled into base context in a straight line towards you. So that's really good for sniping things like, I don't know, casters who don't want to be in combat. Who's that? Hmm, let me think. Lady Gladrill. Whip her into combat. Yep, thank you. Then you've got the uh, Demon of the Ancient World. So basically he can call a heroic combat every turn without expending a point of might. So yeah, and he can't be instant killed. He just takes half wounds. Uh, it's Goblin Mastery. So friendly goblins pass courage tests automatically within 12 inches of him. That's amazing because their courage stinks. And then he's got the Flame of Uden. Uden? There you go. Flame of Uden. And he's never considered to be unarmed. So, yeah, it's pretty good. And he's immune to being set ablaze and fire attacks. That's pretty crazy. So, yeah. And he's got a chance of setting people ablaze. That's not bad. And then with him, you just want to bring a bunch of goblins. Just fill the ranks with goblins. That's it. You've got your spectres to move people around as you want. Fill the fill the rest with goblins. You've got the Balrog who's beating everyone up. And then you've got your orc banner. Keep him near the Balrog. Because guess what? Your green allies. So the Balrog now has a banner. That's nuts. And the Balrog's like ancient evil special rule is 18 inches. So they're all minus one courage within 18 inches. So the ring wraith can drain courage as well on a hero or normal infantry or whatever you want to kill. You've got Blades of the Dead on a couple of your guys, so they attack courage rather than defence. Plus, you can move people around. It's absolutely bonkers. Absolutely bonkers. Yeah, and plus your goblins aren't running. So, you can take a mix of orcs and goblins, or all goblins. It's entirely up to you. But this gets crazy. So, yeah, that is my top three rare-to-see like alliances on the tabletop. Now let me know what you think, I'd love to hear your opinions, if you've seen one of these please tell me how it did, because I'd love to know. Okay, and if you ever want to have a chat, I do have a link in the description, which is my Discord server, where you talk anything like Middle Earth or anything tabletop gaming, I'm up for it. Okay, brilliant, thank you ever so much for listening, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Goodbye. <laughs>